Hi, I'm Jay from X-Rite. Today we're going to talk about transmissive profiling, automated transmissive profiling with the i1 Pro 3 Plus and iO3. Um, one of the coolest new features we've added to our i1 profiler software is automated profiling. What this means is you can use the same iO3 and same i1 Pro 3 Plus that you're using for your reflective work and now do transmissive profiling without having to buy a really, really expensive dedicated transmissive device. Okay, so we're in i1 Profiler. There's a new line in i1 Profiler for transmissive profiling with the i1 IO and the i1 I Pro 3 Plus. When you select that, it comes up with a patch set generator similar to our, our print workflow. I'm going to set it for 280 patches. Um, for, for best quality, you use a lot more patches than that, but for this demo, I'm just going to use 280. After you select your patches, i1 Profiler will let you print out your targets. As well, it has you print out a light box template. Uh, the light box template is a piece of paper that you just cut out the center of that allows us to, to register uh, the location of uh, the device, the I.O., on the light box. So normally I would hit print all and they would all print out to my printer. I've already printed them for this though. So one of the cool things about this particular process that's different than other profiling processes is we, we actually measure the back of the substrate and we measure the light box when it's off. Uh, this allows us to, to optimize for diffusion of light through the material. So right now I'm measuring the back of the substrate. Next step is for the I.O. to measure the light box when it's on. Again, you'll see the template on the light box um, here. I've taped the light box down. I've taped the template that I've cut out to the light box. There's a little animated video there showing you how to, how to do it. Then we hit measure. And as you would normally use the I.O., same as you are here, you align the I.O to the crosshairs in the template, just like you would on a reflective target, and hit the button on the, the I1. And that allows the I.O. to know where your target's going to be. Okay. Now it starts reading. So in the I1 I.O. Uh, automation for transmission, the device is reading in spot mode. It looks like it's scanning, but it's measuring in spot mode. This allows us to get the best measurement of the light box by getting a fully saturated exposure. Um, if we were running in scan mode, uh, it would have a fixed integration time or a fixed exposure, and it wouldn't necessarily give us the best reading. So it's reading the first row now. Um, we'll skip ahead to uh, after it's read the whole light box. Okay, so now we're done measuring the light box. One note on measuring the light box and, and measurements with automation with I.O., the brighter the light box, the faster it goes because of the, the in, increased uh, uh, or decreased exposure time with brighter light boxes. So next we're going to add the target. In this case, I've got two pages of targets. And again, we are mapping the target, just as we would on a ref reflective target. And then the I.O. starts to measure the color patches. And again, it's measuring the color patches in spot mode, so it uh, gets full saturation uh, on each exposure, which gives you a much much better data and, and potentially a much better profile. So we're done measuring our charts. The next step is measure your viewing light box. So this would be the light box that you're going to use to actually display the materials on. This is actually one of the coolest and most powerful features in, in this workflow. Um, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. You have the ability here to measure light boxes, all kinds of light boxes, display light boxes. So if you're doing a light box for a, a, 
a, a bus stop or a light box for a commercial menu, a store, or whatever, whether they're fluorescent, LED, whatever, you can measure those light boxes and apply them to your profile. Every time you measure a different display light box, you can actually save it in here so you don't have to go back and remeasure it. So you can build a library of target light boxes, which is really, really cool. In this case, we're going to use the, the, the same measurement as we used for our light box uh, that we measured uh, our targets on. Uh, we can import standard illuminance. We can use whatever we want for ambient light. So we're picking our ambient light so we can mix in how reflected light actually works with the, with the material and profile. I'm just going to use a standard illuminant. Um, you can set your profile settings like you would on, on I1 profile or for building other profiles. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to leave them alone. And then we can save our profile. Right now, I1 Profiler is building the profile. It's a little bit more complex than our standard reflective profiles, so it takes a little bit longer because we've added in um, a bunch of new uh, variables for uh, diffusion, for uh, reflective and transmissive, for uh, uniformity of the light box, etc. So our profile has been built and saved successfully, um, and this is a, what it looks like, which is Pretty cool. And we're done. So that's it for, for our transmissive profiling workflow. Um, one question we often get is about light boxes. In this case, the light box we're using is just an off-the-shelf LED light box that I bought online for about $25. Um, you can use a, a, a bigger, thicker light box if you'd like, a fluorescent light box, whatever. It's, as long as it doesn't have a, an edge uh, lip on it that the I.O. can't cross, um, and as long as it's in an okay color temperature range. With these low-cost light boxes, you can get them in, in 10,000 degrees Kelvin. Um, ideally, you want to keep it in a normal range so the software doesn't have to um, stretch the gamut uh, with, with the crazy, crazy color temperature like that. So a light box in, in 5,000, 6,000 degrees Kelvin is fine. Um, so thanks for watching. That's it for, for automated transmissive workflow.